Hey, good morning and welcome to Iper Baptist Church. We're so excited for our seventh week of our Fruitful Series and this week we have got Cassie who is one of our Moreland students looking at the word gentleness. So you are in for a treat. I'm going to pray, we're going to head into a song, then we're going to have Cassie bring us the word and then I will come back and pray with you to finish off our morning together. So let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you for the opportunity to gather together online. We want to thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to still exercise our right as Christians to be able to watch church in our own homes. Father, we pray that you'll be with us, that we will have hearts that are open, ears that are open to hearing and receiving what it is that you would have say to us today through Cassie's message. Lord God, we ask this all in your precious name. Amen. Enjoy the service. seventh week of our fruitful series now and throughout this whole series our starting point has been Paul's letter to the Galatians. In Galatians 5 22 to 23 he writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Last week, we had Johnny exploring the fruit of faithfulness by taking a look at the book of Hosea in the Old Testament. Hosea's relationship with a promiscuous woman and his continued faithfulness to her are symbolic for God's relationship with Israel, for God's continued faithfulness to a people who kept on turning away from him and chasing after other gods. This week, I will be looking at the fruit of gentleness. Every time I hear or read these verses about the fruit of the Spirit, it brings back memories of being on beach mission down in Cornwall. And one of our favourite songs to sing with the kids there is The Fruit of the Spirit is Not a Coconut, which is probably the main reason why I can always remember all nine fruits of the Spirit, because a lot of things are always a lot easier to remember through song. But it does make it hard not to sing these verses. We also made up actions for all the fruits, and the action we did for gentleness was like this. Like cradling a baby. To be fair though, that action often ends up being not particularly gentle when the song is sung at high speed, and it looks more like this. But when we do it slowly, this is actually a good place to start thinking about gentleness and being gentle. Babies need gentleness. When we hold a baby, we need to do so gently and carefully. But not only babies need gentleness. Animals need gentleness. We all need gentleness and care, even the strongest and toughest among us. Yet, gentleness is a steeply misunderstood concept. Let me ask you, what are the first things you think of when you hear the word gentleness or being gentle? When children are told to be gentle, it often means just stroke the cat, don't pull its tail, or don't pull your sister's hair, or simply no hitting. When we get older and someone says to us, you're being gentle, that's usually not a compliment. Gentleness is often seen as a weakness or being passive. But this is a misconception. Being kind and humble and careful is not a sign of weakness. It is actually a sign of great strength and care. It requires a lot of self-control. Because more often than not, hitting can be easier than stroking. A power displaying defensive response easier than a gentle approach. As I was preparing this message this week, I had several images that I could use to illustrate gentleness, but I was struggling to find the right verses to go with any of my ideas. But then, while I was thinking about everything that is or can be gentle, the thought that stuck with me is, love is gentle. I can't tell how exactly I reached that conclusion, why most of my thoughts kept circling around Aslan and his gentleness as a strong and powerful lion. But it helped me to put the fruit of gentleness into the context of the other fruits. The fruits of the spirit grow in relationship with each other. They define and complete each other and flow from one another. While we might sometimes grow more of one fruit than of another, none of the fruits can reach their full potential without the others. When Sharon introduced the fruit of love at the beginning of this fruitful series, she looked at Paul's letter to the Corinthians, particularly the love chapter, Corinthians 13. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, Paul writes, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, 
always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Paul does not explicitly say here that love is gentle, but the way love is described is the perfect image of gentleness. Love is patient, love is kind. Gentleness is the quality of being kind and careful. Notice also how Paul uses other fruits as attributes of the first fruit. A few weeks after Sharon looked at the fruit of love, Paul, that is our Paul at Eifert, not Paul from the Bible, explored the fruit of patience, and the following week, Johnny looked into kindness and goodness. If we just take this verse, love is patient, love is kind, we can see how one fruit springs from another and how they cannot grow on their own. We can actually go through a whole list of fruits in Galatians and see how each one grows out of the other. We start with love, which is the foundation and everything else flows from there. Paul says himself that he can have everything and be incredibly gifted, but if he does not have love, he has nothing. All these other earthly goods and talents he might possess, possess now, will pass away, away eventually. But 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 says, Now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is the reason we grow the other fruits of the Spirit. If we have real, true love, and I don't mean that holiday fa Hollywood fairy tale kind of true love, but a godly kind of love that comes out of who God is and who we are in him. If we have that kind of love, we will reap joy from that love. Not just superficial temporary happiness, but soul deep joy, the kind of joy that warms you from the inside out. With that love and joy, we can have peace kind of peace that Jesus brings us. Peace I leave you, with you, my peace I give you, he says in John 14, 27. When we have that kind of peace within us, we will be more patient. If we are loving, joyful, at peace within, and patient, how could we not be kind as well as good? And as Johnny demonstrated, two weeks ago by delivering a combined message on kindness and goodness. These two follow closely together. Faithfulness follows these six fruits because the previous fruits make us faithful in our relationship to God and to others. And then finally gentleness flows from that. We cannot be gentle without love and patience and the other fruits that flow into it as well. And then the last three, self-control, which will be next week's topic, follows from gentleness, because like I've already said before, gentleness is not a weakness, but a strength under control. I have read several definitions of gentleness this week, and these were the ones that resonated with me the most. Gentleness is a strong hand with a soft touch. A strong hand with a soft touch. There's a poem called The Village Smith by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, which describes the smith like this. The smith, a mighty man is he, with large and sinewy hands, and the muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands. I think the way that he is described evokes this image of this rough and tough man who makes a living of basically beating and hammering metal day in and day out. But then, when he goes to church on Sunday and listens to his daughter sing in the choir, his heart rejoices, and the memories that brings up of his late wife bring tears to his eyes, and his gentle spirit becomes truly evident. But even before that, the poem shows that smithing is not just brute force and heat, it actually requires a gentle touch. As it says, You can hear him swing his heavy sledge, 
with measured beat and slow, like a sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low. With measured beat and slow, this is not just blindly beating on the metal, it's gentle strength, carefully directed to create something good. This leads me into the second definition of gentleness. Gentleness is having the right, the power and authority to do something, but choosing to bring it under control to fulfil a higher good. When a man's force and strength is just let loose with no purpose and direction, it is often explosive and destructive, like two bolts running rampant, instead of their strength being harnessed to plough field and farm crops for living. Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When I have previously heard or read the, the word yoke, I would have never associated it with gentleness. I always thought of it more as a burden, as something oppressive. And I'm sure I'm not the only one there, because in the Old Testament, the yoke is often used as a metaphor of oppression. The prophet Jeremiah is one example of that. But actually, a yoke is not designed to suppress strength, but rather to harness and direct it for a higher good. When two oxen are running wild, they are likely to trample and run over. But if a yoke is put upon them, their strength can be harnessed and used to plough a field, which then allows the people to plant crops for food. Nowadays, there are machines that are used for that, but for the people of Israel, the yoke was a valuable tool to harness the strength of an animal and to use it for good. So it can actually be a sign of gentleness because it is used to put strength under control for a higher good. Now the oxen might not choose on their own accord to have a yoke put upon them and their strength harnessed, but when their owners choose to bring the oxen's strength under control, they are fulfilling a higher good. The yoke that Jesus speaks of in these verses certainly is not an oppressive yoke. Jesus says of himself that he is gentle and humble and hard. So, when he himself embodies gentleness, his yoke can only be a gentle one. Jesus is gentle. And when we start to follow him, gentleness is one of the fruits we will grow. This third definition of gentleness also nicely follows the image of the yoke. It says, gentleness it is, an, is an inward grace that easily submits our own strength of will to God's Lordship. This is gentleness choosing to take Jesus' yoke upon us of course, it's always easy and fun to chase after our own ideas and do things our own way. But that's not necessarily always the best way. More often than not, we have to learn the hard way that our way isn't what's best for us. Though we might not like it, God always knows better than we do. He is gentle to us. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, Thy will be done. But to what extent do we actually mean it when we say that? Do we just mean, Your will, God, should be done in this world as long as it doesn't get into the way of my will? Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night he was betrayed, prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus knew exactly what lay ahead of him. He knew the pain he would have to endure. So he prays, if it is possible, 
may this cup be taken from me. But he also knows that his suffering will be for a much higher good. He does have the power and authority that he could defeat his accusers and the whole Roman Empire in a single blow. But what would that accomplish in the end? So, instead, Jesus submits his own will to his Father's will for our good. This is a true sign of strength. This is gentleness. One thing I noticed as I was thinking of these examples of gentleness is how the most gentle beings are often those you would not expect to be gentle. The village smith, a strong and tough looking man, is a very gentle spirit, kind of like Bubbles, the social worker in Leela and Stitch. The pair of oxen whose strength is harnessed through a gentle yoke. Shire horses rather than Shetland ponies, and Aslan, the great lion, the king of Narnia. I mean, who would have thought that a big wild cat would be the embodiment of gentleness? But Aslan, while being so big and so strong, is also incredibly kind and gentle. I like what the beavers say about Aslan. Safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. Not safe, but good. That, I think, is gentleness. It's not a lack of strength and authority. It's channeling that strength and authority, because of your goodness, into acts of care and kindness for a higher good. That is gentleness. Let me recap the main points about gentleness. Gentleness is not a weakness. Gentleness is strength under control. Gentleness flows from the other fruits of the spirit which all grow in relationship with each other. Love is gentle. What Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13 about what love is and does are all signs of gentleness. Gentleness is a strong hand with a soft touch. Gentleness is having the right, the power and authority to do something, but choosing to bring it under control to fulfill a higher good. Like the strength of an oxen harnessed through a yoke into a good and gentle output. Gentleness is an inward grace that easily submits our own strength and will to God's Lordship. It is found when we pray, like Jesus did, Thy will be done, and really mean it. Lastly, a little bear told me this week that gentleness is like a hug, and I think he's right. A good hug is gentle. But there's actually more to it than that. The best hugs are filled with all the fruits of the spirit. So may I encourage you this week to think of ways how you can be more gentle and to reflect when we pray, thy will be done, to what extent we are really submitting our will to God's will. And if you're not living on your own, give those in your household a hug that is full of gentleness in all the other fruits of the Spirit. So, have love, be filled with joy, find peace, grow in patience, be kind and be good, stay faithful and act gently. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your gentleness. You are so gentle to us in the way you treat us and especially treat our sins. We pray that your will be done and that when we pray that we will actually mean it and that we will be able to submit our own will to your will. And we pray that through that we will learn to be more gently. 
in Argento. Yeah, we just pray that your will really be done in this world because your will is so much better than what we might think and what our will might be. So we pray, teach us to be more gentle and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, Cassie, thank you so much for that message. I hope that you enjoyed that at home. I loved what she said there. Gentleness is an inward act that submits our will to God's Lordship. How incredible is that? That actually it still requires us to, us to submit ourselves to God so that he can work through us. Can I encourage you to act gently this week with those that you come into contact with? But before you go, let me pray for you. Father God, we want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you for the word that Cassie brought to us. Father, I pray that you'll provide us with opportunities this week to act gently with one another. Father, let us submit to your will and walk in your ways so that we can have the best impact that we possibly can when we come into contact with others. Help us, Father, to be blessed this week. Help us to know that you are with us and that you are for us. We ask this all in your precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. amen. Well, amen. Have a fantastic week and we will see you back here next Sunday for our final week on South Control. Take care. God bless.